Hello everybody, I'm Carrie Peterson with Doggybo. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about a very, very, very hot topic. It is called tear staining. It's the number one thing that's probably researched for the Maltese breed. The number one thing that Maltese and other white coated breeds of cats and dogs struggle with. It is a problem that as a breeder for eight years I heard the most about. Welcome to my page. I hope to be here today to talk to you guys a little bit about the information that I've come to know over the last 20 years as a Maltese owner and also a Maltese breeder. I now own doggybow.com and I am doing this uh, little webinar or informational meeting with questions and answers pertaining to um, this issue of tear staining. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to first talk a little bit about some of the issues that people have with tear staining. You know, what causes it, what you can do about it at home to take care of the problem, and some of the things that I recommend. So what you can do is go ahead and post your questions below and what I will do is I will answer them to the best of my ability. If I don't know the answer, then I will certainly be happy to research it and get back to you. So recently I started promoting a product called Always Bright Eyes. And the reason I started promoting that particular product, I've used other products in the past. I've used many, many different methods and techniques. But first of all, before we get to that, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what causes tear stain. People want to know, I have a huge Maltese group called Maltese Beloved Pets. And in that group, probably on a daily basis, now there's over 7,000 people in that group, but on a daily basis, there is people that want to know what to do about their tear staining. Now, there's a lot of different things that cause tear staining. And I know a lot of people want a quick fix, they want a quick answer, and they want to know what to do to solve it. So first of all, let's talk about genetics. Um, just like we have different genetics and different um, things that we're born with, that is also very genetic in the Maltese breed. Now, the reason it's genetic it can do ha have to do with the, the makeup of the dog when it's born. Okay, let's say the dog's shape of its face is very downslope. The tears are going to run down more, the face is going to remain wet and the tears sitting on the hair is going to cause the hair turning red. It has to do with yeast in the hair and bacteria growing. So the number one thing you need to do is try to keep the hair dry. Now that brings us to the next point. People are like, okay, well I'm trimming the hair, I'm putting cornstarch on it, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. First of all, you can't change the shape of the dog's face, but what you can do is, first of all, if the dog is tearing, you need to look at what's going on internally. Internally, genetically, you can't change, but internally, you want to make sure, number one, how old is the dog? If it's a puppy that is teething, it's going to have some tearing. Uh, the best thing you can do if they're teething is you can keep the face dry, you can keep it clean. Um, if they have clogged tear ducts, you want to make sure that you are massaging underneath the eyes every day. The vet can also help you with that. You need to see your vet and make sure that the tear ducts are not infected, okay? Because infection in the teeth or the ears or the tear ducts will cause the tearing which will cause the bacteria, which will cause the yeast to grow, which will cause the tear staining. So you need to make sure that they don't have some kind of an infection. The second thing is, you want to make sure that you are giving them a food that doesn't have any additives or preservatives in it. You don't want to buy the cheapest food that's on sale, the Tuffy's brand at the grocery store, and you don't want to buy the, the most exciting looking canned dog food that has all kinds of coloring and dyes in it. Because what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with a dog that's tearing like crazy. They have a stained mouth. And you're like, what's going on? Okay. 
The next thing is water. Water is important, right? We all have to use water. Everybody has different water depending on their city, depending on their um, part of the country. There can be iron in the water. Iron in the water can cause tearing, it can cause staining around the mouth, okay? And so you wanna make sure, some people say distilled water, distilled water, bottled water. You know, every type of water, it's always up for, for discussion. I personally recommend just filtered water. You can just buy a Brita filter, use filtered water. Distilled water has everything taken out of it. There's like no, nutri no nutrients from them or anything, in it, which is not good. So you wanna make sure, so now we've gone to the vet, we've made sure that they don't have infection in their teeth, their ears, or their tear ducts. Make sure they don't have inverted eyelashes. That can happen, that genetically can happen where the eyelids are growing, or the eyelashes are growing on the inside of the eyelids. It's painful, it irritates the eyes, and that can be an issue. So make sure you have your vet check for inverted eyelids. So now we've been to the vet, we've made sure the dog is healthy, the dog's not teething. Um, we wanna make sure we give him a good, nutritious food um, with no additives or dyes. Some people think grain-free really works. Okay, so now we've dealt with the nutrition aspect. The next thing is the grooming aspect, okay? So number three, you wanna make sure when you're grooming that you're trimming the hair so it's not poking in their eyes, okay? If they like to scratch at their face a lot, you wanna make sure that they're not pushing the hair into the eyes. When you're trimming their eyes, make sure you're not getting little particles of hair in their eyes because that'll stay in there and it'll irritate and then they'll tear a lot. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm Carrie Peterson, owner of Doggy Bow, and today I'm talking about tear staining. It is always researched, and, and, and people want to know answers for light-coated breeds and cats. What to do about tear staining. So we're talking about solutions. Um, the next thing is, um, after you've done that, okay, the water, back to the water issue. So water can be hard, it can have minerals, in it it can have iron in it and you want to make sure that you're feeding and giving food um, go ahead and share this webinar below um, you can click share if you're watching this give me some thumbs up let me know that you guys can hear me okay that I'm answering your questions and when you give a thumbs up and share below that'll help other people to see as well so uh, you want to make sure that you're using stainless steel Okay, stainless steel dishes actually um, don't allow bacteria to grow in the water, in the food, okay? So there, there's actually, you know, a name for that. And that is called, let's see, I'm looking in my notes here, bacterial, bacteriostatic agents. So it actually helps to fight the bacteria. If you're using plastic dishes, there can be cracks or scratches in the dish where bacteria can grow. There can be coloring in the plastic dishes that are causing the staining. So you wanna make sure that you're using a stainless steel bowl. Ceramic would be okay too. Um, a lot of people use ceramic. So we've covered the yeast infection is the hair growing in the, the hair, the wetness growing in the hair is the yeast, okay? Block tear ducts, ear infection, teething, irritation of the eyes, water, an infection or disease, okay? So those are some of the things that can cause it, okay? The other thing you can do is you can make sure the environment, the environment needs to be without allergens. Some Maltese are highly allergic to the environment around them. It could be the... Um, what you're washing their bedding with. If you're using a lot of uh, perfumes, you know, dryer sheets, different things that can cause allergies in dogs and cause tearing. Um, you need to make sure that you're using, um, <laughs> Avery's bringing me Maybelline. Thank you, Ave. Here's Maybelline, everybody. Oh, Avery just did her hair for me. Thank you, Avery. Um, so you want to make sure that you can, yeah, you give me some love. Okay, 
So you want to, what you want to make sure is that, I'm trying to think of where am I losing my train of thought here. Okay, so you can have an air filter in the room, okay? So like an air purifier in the room. You also want to make sure that you are changing your filters in your furnace and air conditioner, okay? All that catches allergens where they can get um, allergies and tearing from that, okay? So it's, it's a lot of different things. But hopefully this gives you a few things to think about, you know, things that work well, okay? So we've talked about health, we've talked about grooming, we've talked about uh, nutrition and feeding, and then we've talked about environment. It's important that Maltese also get out in the, out in the sunshine, they get outside, just like it's healthy for us, it's also healthy for them to be outside getting fresh air and getting sunshine, okay? So... <clears throat> Next, I want to talk about possible solutions that people are currently using. If you search on the internet, there are dozens of possible solutions for tear staining. But I'm here to tell you that some one solution that works for one dog or cat is not going to work for another. And so what we have to do is we just have to do our best to make the environment and their nutrition the best we can and then just take care of them. And uh, as you can see, Maybelline doesn't have tear staining. Well, she comes from a long line of, of breeder, a breeder that uh, Tejan Maltese that worked very, very hard to breed in quality. So a lot of times it will be the breeders that are not, you know, um, breeding them properly. It ha can have to do with their dentition. Like I said, the shape of their face and it, it can be very genetic. So if your dog has tear staining, don't feel bad. There's a lot of them that have it and people try very hard to stop it. The only thing you can do is maybe use products that actually help to lighten the tear, tear staining or help to um, get rid of it and prevent further tear staining. You don't necessarily stop the, the genetics of the staining, but you will stop the staining of the hair by putting, by taking measures to, um, to lighten the hair. Okay? So, Let's see. Okay, what are some of the possible known fixes? Um, if you're joining us, please share below so other people can en enjoy this knowledge as well. I'm Carrie Peterson. I've had Maltese for about 20 years, and um, there's a lot of confusion what causes tear staining, so I'm here to try to help you guys. I'm actually going to look on my laptop here and see if there's anybody that is asking any questions. Just give me a minute here. Um, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and put them below. What I'm going to do is recently when I put out this new, I'm carrying this product. I did not create the product. Um, breeders that have been breeding for 20 years trying to create this product uh, formulated it, created it. And so I have been um, distributing the product for them. But I can certainly answer your questions the best I can. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go over some of the questions that I have seen people asking. And then if you guys have any other questions, you can go ahead and um, type them below, okay? So, um, first of all, vinegar in the water. Some people think that vinegar in the water works. Um, if this has worked for you, click the like button, click the thumbs up button. But what I have found is that um, who wants to drink vinegar in their water? Uh, I think the, the, the dog is gonna be deterred from drinking enough water and hydration is very important. So when you start adding stuff to their water, it gets to be very difficult for them to wanna to drink the water. So that's the issue there. Okay, I'm just going to turn this down, so. Okay, so. Uh, another thing is yogurt. Some people add yogurt to their dog's diet, which gives them good bacteria. That's, that's good, but uh, you, you hope that they don't get sick from it. You hope that they don't get the diarrhea and everything else, and then you're running into to other issues. My dogs don't get yogurt, so I don't know how well that works. Cornstarch. A lot of people just put cornstarch on the face. Um, that does stop the wetness. However, it doesn't stop the bacteria and the yeast growth. 
and cornstarch can actually get in their eyes and cause more irritation. Um, Tums. Some people say give them Tums, you know, Tums tablets with calcium. Well, what happens if you're giving them too much calcium? Now you might be doing damage to the dog internally. I don't recommend that. Uh, the old and trendy trick of milk and magnesia and 20% cream peroxide for people to color their hair. That is extremely dangerous. Now, I admit, you know, almost 20 years ago, you know, I, I tried the same thing. Okay, there's two issues. First of all, if you're putting that on every single night, it is damaging the hair follicle, okay? So it's actually bleaching the hair over and over and over again. Now you're going to get breakage of the hair, and you're also risking that getting in the dog's eyes. Uh, cream bleach in the eyes is not a good thing, okay? Um, women that go and get their hair highlighted with this cream bleach, uh, you don't put it by your eyes. As a matter of fact, if the cream bleach is strong, it, it starts to burn your eyes because I've had my hair highlighted uh, dozens and dozens of times and when they use really strong lightener, it burns your eyes. So I can't imagine putting that up close to the eyes, but this is what a lot of people do. And don't feel bad if you've done it. I'm just telling you that you know, you're putting it on, putting it on, putting it on. It's going to start, it's going to start um, damaging the hair and it's going to start causing this issue with, um, you know, irritation to the eyes and you have to wash it out the next day and stuff like that. So it's pretty, pretty harsh. Okay. And what about if they get it in their mouth? You know, it's not, it's not the milk and magnesia that's the issue. It's the cream bleach again. Okay. So I just, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, Let's see, what else is on the market? There's tons of different products. There's different products that you give them internally, like supplements that help with um, balance their pH and such, um, that help with tear stain treats and stuff like that. Um, but then there's also um, topical things. Um, there's Eye Envy, there's Angel Eyes, there's um, one that I called, called Beta, Beta Bridges Natural Tear Stain Remover. There's Tropiclean um, Spa Facial Scrub. There's Pure Paws Love My Eyes. There's um, Butchler Sheen Tear Stain Remover. And of course, the one I recommend is Always Bright Eyes. Now, the reason I like Always Bright Eyes is because it's all natural, okay? so. They worked very hard to find something that was natural and non-toxic so that people could use the product without being worried, oh my gosh, my dog is gonna get it in their mouth, what if it gets in their eyes, what if, you know, what if I have to use it every day, is it gonna, do? no, it's very natural, it does not have antibiotics in it. Some of the products that have been caught putting antibiotic in their product and have been told that they cannot do that anymore. This product always, Bright Eyes does not have antibiotics in it, does not have cornstarch in it. Now you're all going to say, well, what's in it? I don't know what's in it. Because if they put their ingredients out there, their competitors would obviously be copying them, right? So this is a formulation that they have been working on for 20 years. And they're Maltese breeders, show breeders. So they have worked very, very hard to formulate this. And so I don't know exactly what's in it, but I can tell you that I've been using it on my Maltese Isabella, and I've been using it because she loves to, you know, she's got the best food, and she's got good water and all this stuff, but she likes to chew her feet because she's bored, okay? It's boredom. She's very, you know, she's, she's, she's fine, but... So she stains around her mouth, and I've been using it, and she's doing fine. She's doing great, so... You can use it on their paws. You can use it underneath their eyes. You don't have to worry about them getting sick. You don't have to wash it out the next morning. I just take a comb and just comb it out and it just comes out like powder. And you want to rub it into the hair very, very firmly because the more you can rub it into the base of the hair, um, I will be doing a tutorial video very soon, very up close so you can see how I work it into the hair and such. But basically, you want to work it in because that activates the powder and it activates the product. So, um, so anyways, that's always bright eyes. Okay, um, now that brings me to my next point. I wanted to answer a few questions for you guys. 
Um, somebody asked if the question was, if you're using a day and night, is the dog always going to have paste on them? Um, in the evening would be, okay. So the question was, is it always going to have paste? Well, first of all, you don't have to do it twice a day. You can do it once a day unless they're heavily stained. Then you're going to want to do twice a day because you're trying to get the product to work as quickly and efficiently as possible. But you could start off with once a day is fine at bedtime, okay? You're not going to have to worry about getting on your, your blankets or clothing or anything like that. It's not going to bleach anything. It doesn't have bleach or anything like that in it. So what you're going to want to do is do that and you can put it on there at, at uh, nighttime. So you saturate the hair with the first liquid. It literally takes two minutes to do. So you saturate the hair and then what you do is you rub in the powder and that's it. That's it. And then the next morning you can just brush the powder out. If you want to reapply the liquid you can otherwise just keep keep the powder on there to keep it dry and that's what you do. The next question was, does it work on saliva stained feet from chewing? Yes, yes, I, yes, it's perfectly safe to put on their feet. Um, I would suggest if they keep chewing their little feet, maybe put some baby socks on them or something, I don't know. But um, if you're worried about them licking it all off or whatever. Um, is it cornstarch base? No, it does not have cornstarch in it. It looks like it does, but it does not. Um, does it smell? Not really. Um, it doesn't have a strong smell to it. A um, little bit of odor, but nothing that you're going to notice unless you got your nose right up to it. Um, does it have boric acid? No, it does not have boric acid in it. Absolutely not. It's an all-natural product. Um, you don't need to rinse it off. What happens if they lick it? Nothing. Nothing happens to them if they lick it. Um, how often do you want to use it if the stains are gone? You can use it as a maintenance a couple times a week, you know, just to keep just to keep it from getting red, to keep it from the bacteria growing in there. Um, is it safe to use close to the eyes? Yes, you don't want to get it in the eyes uh, or in the mouth, but you it's safe for this whole area here. Okay. Um, do I ship internationally? Yes, yes. I personally at my store am able to ship the product Always Bright Eyes internationally. Now what you're going to need to do is go to, you can go to MalteseTearStain.com and when you get there put the, put the item in your cart and then you can choose your address internationally and then once you, once you do that you can um, estimate your shipping and we will ship it to you. So yes we ship internationally. Um, I guess that's the only questions I could see. Um, there's a lot of different products, antibacterial or antibiotic products on the market. I would really be careful using anything out there because you can throw the whole gut health off and they can build a tolerance to it and there's people using stuff that's intended for other animals and I would just really seriously be careful with that. So. Now I'm going to open it up for about 10 minutes here. I'm going to answer any questions that you might have. If you have a question, go ahead and type it below and I will answer it the best I can. Um, if, the, if this has already ended, go ahead and shoot us a message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and at the, other, at the end of the webinar, I am going to um, offer you guys an exclusive um, savings if you want to try the always bright eyes it's actually guaranteed by the company and if you're not pleased with it and you don't see results you can certainly let us know so is there anybody that has any questions any kind of grooming questions or questions about tear staining I'm here to help Hey Deborah, um, yes. What happens if it gets in the dog's eyes? Well, first of all, you want to try, nothing will happen to their eyes. It's safe for the eyes, but you don't want to put it in the eyes. You want to put it directly below their eyes, you know, 
when you wet the hair and you put it on the eye on the beard right here you're going to push down and you're going to use the brushes that it comes with to work it into the hair so what happens is it doesn't kind of fly all over it's hard to explain but as you work it into the to the hair it kind of sticks to the hair and doesn't really go into the eyes I haven't noticed a problem with it going into Isabella's eyes at all and so um, but it will not hurt their eyes it's it's made natural and it won't irritate the eyes so you just want to make sure when you put the liquid on and saturate it just put the powder where the saturation is and then just rub it in so I haven't noticed anything um, 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 let's see So I'm going to be adding some feedback that I've gotten from customers about the product and about, um, oh, okay. Stacy, welcome. Um, it looks like you have a question about flat ironing, doing it under his chin and chest. Are you showing him, Stacy? Um, tips for... Are you, are you using any kind of grooming table um, to hold his little head up because you don't want him to lick or touch that iron because he will burn himself pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's probably just more tender and he wants to lick it and smell it and that's why he, his chin and chest is really... I would, I would recommend using a grooming uh, leash that goes underneath the chin. Uh, you don't want to put it around the trachea but just underneath the chin bones. Oh, okay, so you just want his hair to look nice and straight. Um, so that's fine. So just uh, if you have, um, even a, if you don't have a grooming table, okay, you have electronic table. Okay, so just make sure you can get a thicker one just so you don't damage your trachea. Um, or you could use a, um, a show leash and just kind of wrap it around the pole. Do you have one of those poles that goes up and over the grooming table? That's what I would recommend. So the grooming pole will actually hold the leash. Uh, maybe I can show that in my next grooming video. But you can buy um, show leads that have satin. I used to sell them, but I don't sell them anymore. They have satin sewn in the very bottom um, that goes underneath the, the neck to protect the trachea and also to stop the hair from getting tangled. So um, no, uh, Deborah, there's not really a special Okay, so what I would do is, so Stacy, what I would do is, I would use, do you have a show leash or a leash that is wider? If you can try to get a, I don't think they call them, they call them a grooming, not a new, um, a grooming, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> You think I would know after all these years of having the breed? Well, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm just being humble here. I, um, anyways, they attach to the grooming arm. So they would be sold anywhere they sell the grooming arm and the grooming table usually. If you look up grooming um, show supply stores, they'll show them. And you, they just clip on to the, to the bar. But you could use a regular leash. And when you hold his little neck up, what will happen is... He won't he won't be able to look down and I think it's important to use that I really do because they can burn their nose or lick lick that hot iron so oh okay cool so when you have the show lead just put it tight enough you don't you're not too tight but tight enough that it holds his little head up sit him on the table you know pet him a little bit encourage him and then just kind of wrap it around the top of the bar and it'll hold his neck up so that you can iron his chest and his chin so I hope that answers your question. Um, Deborah, is there a special dog iron? No, people just use the skinny, you know, one inch irons. Some of them use the wider irons if the dog has a real thick, heavy coat. Uh, most show people do ironing of the coat. It looks prettier. Um, to be honest with you, they don't want people to see the wave in the dog's coat. It's the truth. Um, they're competing in the ring and the better the dog looks, um, the more chances they have to win. But what's interesting is, is that the show judges, the AKC judges, they know the standard and they know 
Maltese are, you bet, Stacy. Um, the, the show judges know when that dog is altered, they know the coat to the touch. They lift the coat up and drop it and they can tell if it's a true silk coat. If you put a lot of product in it and you're spraying it and ironing and doing all this stuff, they can tell. But it looks, it looks great from far away, right? Because they're doing this stuff. So anyways, um, so that's a little bit about ironing and you wanna make sure that the iron's not too hot. You just like our hair, it's very, very brittle. The thinner the coat, the lower temperature. So make sure you turn the temperature down real low when you're ironing because you can break the hair off, you can damage the hair, and you wanna make sure that you're using um, some kind of a, um, a pre-iron mist. A Pure Paws makes one that when you're misting the hair before you're ironing, it not only helps you to iron, but it also helps you to prevent breakage. So it's just like our hair, it's very fragile. And if you keep ironing, it'll start breaking off. So I hope that helps you. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, has anybody on this that's live here used the, um, trying to find that, the Tropiclean Spa Facial Scrub? You bet, Deborah. The, the facial scrub, does it work really well? Have you had great success with it? Um, can you dilute it or do you have to do a full face wash every time you use it? Um, I've used it in the past, but I wanted to see if anybody on here has had any success with it. Um, that's pretty much all I have. So, tear staining is one of the biggest things that I see people having issues with. And so, um, so, I guess that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions after this ends, go ahead and uh, post them below. Share this, comment, contact us if you have any questions. Um, and I'm going to be offering um, a discount code that I will post in the comments below um, for the next 24 hours after this. The code will only be available for 24 hours for anybody that wants to try the product always bright eyes. So go ahead and watch in a few minutes for the. Okay, so it just cleans it. So it doesn't actually whiten. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of different whitening shampoos out there. Just depends on uh, if you're not careful and you use a whitening shampoo, you can cause the dog to look purple because the bluing agents will turn the dogs. They look like they have a lavender tint. It's not good. So, anyways, this is this is your opportunity. Anybody else have questions? Maybelline's loving this. She's getting all kinds of love and affection here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, again, MalteseTearStain.com. I'm going to be adding more information to my website. I'm going to be having a, a subscription option on there to um, get our um, a free printout about tear staining and solutions. It's also going to have some things on there about how I groom, what the steps are, the procedures that I use in preventing tear stains. So you guys will want to go to my website, doggybow.com. And, or you could go to Maltese Tear Stain and let me know if you have any other questions. I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Take care. Thanks for stopping. Bye-bye.